The following program is paid for by Main Street Living. Hi, I'm Pastor Matthew Harrison, President of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Starting in the late 1950s, Lutheran Hour Ministries aired a television program called This is the Life in their efforts to bring Christ to the nations. It was a critically acclaimed show that used story and drama to convey eternal truths from God's Word. And it featured actors who were just getting started in their careers. Recently, Lutheran Hour Ministries, in partnership with Main Street Living, remastered and brought to HD quality about 50 of these programs. You may notice some young actors who've become very famous. And even though the props and styles are of the 1960s and 70s, the subject matter is still very relevant. So please sit back and enjoy this week's episode of This is the Life. had to twist your arm to get you to come along tonight. Real doll, huh? You know, I think I like her better with a blonde. You know, she's been flipping over you since we walked into the office. Man, you sure have wasted these last three weeks. You know, I wish I'd have told her, though, about being married. What's the difference now? You'll never see her again after tonight. I suppose not. So, I spoil it for her. So, after my divorce, I went to work for Mr. Garrison. And I've been there ever since. He's a nice boss, but he's all business. You're telling us. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something that maybe you don't know. But I overheard him talking to your boss on the phone today, telling him how pleased everybody here in the home office is with both of you. Really? He was really putting it on, as if you were both geniuses or something. Hey, how about that? Well, why didn't you tell us about it sooner? Sure, we'd have celebrated with champagne. Well, even champagne couldn't have made tonight any nicer. Oh, it's just been perfect. Only one thing spoiling it. It's gotten late too soon. Well, it's not that late. Look, I hate to be the one to break things up, but... Then don't. Have you ever punched a typewriter when you didn't have enough sleep? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm afraid not. Well, I guess if Kirk and I are going to make that plane in the morning, we'd better be leaving, too. I should have locked the door and thrown the key away. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> I thought of it. <laughs> well, look, Andy, I'll, uh, I'll grab a cab and take Marilyn home, and then I'll see you back at the hotel later, OK? Oh, all right. I'll give you a hand with the dishes Oh, first. thanks. Marilyn, don't bother. Well, uh, I'll give you a hand with the dishes. You're hired. I'll go get my things. I'll help you. Uh, listen, old buddy, hmm? don't forget our plane leaves at 7.30 a.m. Don't worry, I'll be back to the hotel before you are. <sighs> Another drink? No, I really shouldn't, Lorna. Kirk will be sending out a search party for me. Why is it that pleasant moments go so fast? Yes, they do, don't they? Much too fast. Oh. You've no idea how much I've enjoyed tonight. Well, I have too. I guess I just don't want it to end. You're wonderful. If we could take a moment and keep it alive as long as we want it. That's beautiful. You're a poet. 
<laughs> I'm afraid not. What you said, it reminds me of something I read just last night. For life is but a chain of little moments on which we balance and dance with unsure feet. Little fractions of eternity which die almost as soon as they are born. And if we wait for dreams, we wait as fools. For all we have is this little moment. Now. believe you're really home. Oh, darling, I missed you so much. Three weeks is just too long. It's good to be home. Promise me you won't be gone so long again. No, I won't. Not if I can help it. I didn't know whether you'd had breakfast on the plane or not, so I made some. <laughs> well, we did, but well, I could use some more coffee. Well, let's have some. It's just freshly perked. I've got a zillion and one things to ask you. How was the flight? It was fine. It was very smooth. And Kirk? It's okay. Oh, Andy. I'm so envious of you, seeing New York. Tell me, what's it like? Oh, it's just another town, only bigger. Now, I didn't really get to see too much of it. Well, I suppose they kept you pretty busy at the office. Oh, uh, that garrison's a worker. Oh, you must be beat. And then I had to be up at 5.30 this morning to get out to the airport on time. Well, as soon as I clean up, I must get to the office. You'd think they'd give you the day off. Are you kidding? Oh, by the way, I... I brought you something. Oh, oh Andy! Oh, it's lovely! It's just beautiful! Oh, you know what? I think you're the most wonderful, thoughtful guy in the whole wide world. When this day is over. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah. Hey, your eyes look like a couple of holes burned in a blanket. Yeah, this will teach you. You dog. I told you on the plane nothing happened. Oh, sure, sure. You and Lorna just listened to music all night. Well, believe it or not, that's exactly what we did do. <laughs> well, I don't blame you for kicking yourself, old buddy. You'll miss something like that. Look, Kirk, would you drop it? I've got things to do. Okay, okay. Better see the boss anyway. And I'd relax. Anybody ask me? I don't know nothing. Thank you for your sermon. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Pastor. It's good to see you both again. How's everything going? Oh, just fine. We, uh, we missed you at the Finance Committee meeting the other evening, Andy. Oh, I'm sorry I was out of town. I'm just getting to be quite a traveler. Well, I hope we can make the next meeting. I'll try. 
Good to see you both. Thank you. Goodbye. to tell you, Nancy and Ron Whitmer told me this morning before church they're going out house hunting this afternoon. Well, that's what I call a dirty trick. What do you mean? Well, I was going to make the same suggestion myself as a surprise. <laughs> oh, that'd be wonderful. It's a lovely day, so why don't we just drive around and start looking? Hmm? Do you mean it? Absolutely. But uh, don't you think we ought to... Wait, maybe until we're sure about your raise? Uh, it's practically set, so what do you say? Oh, you know how much I want a place of our own. Okay. We'll do it. Oh, uh, be careful, Andy. Huh? You're spoiling me. So, Garrison wants us in New York on Thursday. You're putting me on. Why should I? We just got back a few weeks ago. Why us again? I don't know. Just lucky, I guess. What's the matter? I thought you'd be glad to hear it. I've got all I can handle right here. Well, so have I. The, the boss will just have to give us some extra help at this end. Now, we sure must have made an impression on old man Garrison. This ought to cinch our raises, too. How long do you think we'll be gone? I don't know. Maybe a week, maybe two. It's a real break for us, Andy. I suppose so, but... And it'll uh, give you a chance to hear the rest of Lorna's music, too. Oh, I sure hate to leave Peg again so soon. Oh, Peg will understand. It's all part of the old ball game. Besides, if you're gonna buy a house, that raise will come in handy. Come in. Have a rough day? Yeah, kind of. Well, why don't you come over here and sit down and relax? Can I get you something? No, thanks. Well, uh, dinner will be ready pretty soon. How about some hors d'oeuvres? Oh, no, I'll wait. Well, how was your day? Oh, just fine. I talked to the real estate man today, and he has a couple of places he wants us to look at, so I told him we could... Andy, is something wrong? They want me to go back to New York again. What? So, so soon? When? Thursday. Oh, but I thought you said that... I know, I know. It's the last thing in the world I want to do right now. Well, why you? Why don't they get somebody else? I don't know. I've been trying to think. It seems Mr. Garrison made the request. Well, in that case, I guess there's nothing you can do. Oh, well, maybe. I'll talk to the boss first thing in the morning. Maybe we shouldn't fight it. I mean, if Mr. Garrison wants you back in New York this soon, it must mean he likes your work. Yeah. Well, I sure wish I could find a way out there without jeopardizing anything. say. He said I was a fool to even think of turning down the trip. I told you that. 
So unless I want to mess myself up with the bosses, I guess I'd better go. I think you're just dreaming up trouble. I still can't understand why Peg's putting up such a fuss. You want me to talk to her? That won't be necessary. She'll buy the decision. So? What's to worry about? Nothing, I guess. are all done. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't help you with them. Oh, you had enough to do. Besides, I just had the most wonderful idea. Why don't I go with you? Hmm? Why not? Look, the company's paying for all your expenses in your hotel, and it wouldn't cost that much for just me. And I'd love to see New York. And I could window shop or something while you're working, and then now, later on... just a minute. On... Slow down. Slow down. Well, why not? Why couldn't I go? Well, for one thing, I'll be busy all the time. We'd hardly even get to see each other. Oh, we could see each other at night. Look, hon. I'd love to have you with me. I really would. But you'd be alone for maybe ten days or so. And, and often we work late in the evening. It just wouldn't be very practical. Well, what's the matter? Do you have a girlfriend stashed away someplace or something? Oh, sure. A whole harem. Hey, look, Peg. Peg? When we go to New York together, well, I want to be able to spend all my time with you, not just a few scattered minutes. Don't you see? It wouldn't be that great a trip for you. I guess you're right. I guess it would be more fun seeing the sights together. I'm sorry. Really, I am. But we'll take a trip ourselves real soon. And therefore, we feel that this ratio is correct and that we should... Did the wine reservations come yet? Yes, everything's set. Oh, and the New York Opera has been trying to reach you. I told you we're out. This is Kirk Nelson. New York's been trying to reach me. I'm in Andy Hartford's office. Well, with the time difference, New York's probably already closed up shop by now. I told the operator you'd be back in a minute. I've got everything we'll need, I think. Looks all right to me. Hartford. Oh, yes, operator, he's right here. Kirk Nelson. Yes. Lorna, how are you? Oh, that's wonderful. Mr. Garrison has been trying to reach you all day and ask me to follow through. He'd like you to bring all of the Alperson data tomorrow. It's very important. Okay, will do. Oh, hey, tell your friend Marilyn to uh, keep some time open, okay? <laughs> oh, and Lorna. Somebody wants to say hello. Hi, Lorna. Andy, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, it's good to hear your voice again. Oh, I'm so glad you're coming to New York. It's going to be just wonderful seeing you. Andy, I hope you won't be quite as busy as you were last time. Oh, uh, yes, well, uh, I hope not, too. Y yes, Lorna. I... Yes, I will. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Like you said. Looks like we're all set. Add your shaving things in the morning. Thanks. You should have let me. With the mood you're in, you'd have never gotten packed. Hey, come on, cheer up. It'll only be a week, and I'll keep busy. 
I'll, uh, I'll look at some more houses and oh, see the girls and maybe spend a day or so with my mom. So don't worry about me. I still wish I weren't going. I'll be thinking of you every moment. And if we wait for dreams, we wait as fools. For all we have is this little moment. Now. I've said. Oh, I'm sorry. Penny, for your thoughts. Oh, I was, uh, it's, it's just I've got things in my mind uh, about the trip. And... Peg, I... Yes? Well, what is it, darling? Oh, nothing. Uh, I think maybe I'll... Take a little walk and try to unwind. Oh, good idea. I think I'll go with you. Uh, look, if it's all the same, I, I think I'll just go by myself. I'd be kind of lousy company for you. What, whatever you say, darling. see you. I was out walking and uh, I saw your light. Oh, I'm glad you did. Sit down. How's everything? Well, uh, I'm supposed to go back to New York again tomorrow morning. Well, you're getting to be quite a commuter. Yeah, if I had my way, I wouldn't go back. In fact, I'm sorry I ever saw the place. Well, why do you say that? Well, because of something that happened last time I was there. Kirk. And uh, no, he's not here. He uh, went for a little walk. All right, I'll tell him. You'll meet him at the office and go to the airport together. Of course, Kirk. Have a smooth flight. Bye. And when I got back from New York, I tried to forget about it. Did everything I could to make Peg happy. To ease my own conscience, I guess. But today, when I heard Lorna's voice on the phone, everything came alive again. Well, that's why I had to talk to somebody tonight. I, I've never felt more confused or miserable in my life. Yet you say that nothing happened that night with you and Lorna. Well, that's not exactly true. I, I did hold her in my arms and I kissed her. But that's all. While I was holding her, it was as if Peg didn't exist. For a moment, all I knew was I wanted Lorna. I did manage to stay faithful to Peg, but... You know, I feel just as guilty as if I'd gone all the way, and, and that's the feeling I can't shake. Uh, I, I know it sounds crazy, but... No, Andy, it's not crazy. You did sin, make no mistake about it. The Bible is very clear on this point. Jesus tells us that whoever lusts after a woman in his heart is just as guilty of sin in God's sight as the person who actually commits the sin of adultery. Well, I sure never felt worse in my life. Top of everything else, I led Lorna on. I let her think I was single. She's a good woman. If she'd have had any idea... Do you plan to tell her? Yes. I'll tell Peg, too. It's not going to be easy, but... 
I do love her too much to let this stay between us. I'm sure she suspects something anyway. I think she'll understand. And being the fine Christian woman she is, I'm sure she'll be ready to forgive you. I know how deeply she loves you. Which makes me feel even worse. Pastor, I wanted to live up to my marriage vows. I feel like the lowest kind of... You're a fine young man, Andy. And you had the courage to tell me about your moment of temptation. That took quite a bit. Why don't you tell it now in prayer to your Heavenly Father, asking his forgiveness and his guidance in the future? He knows you're only human. That's why he gave his son to die for you and me, so that all our weaknesses and sins might be forgiven, including the one you've committed. Will you pray with me? God, our Father, remembering the love you gave us in Jesus Christ, your Son, we ask you to forgive Andy Hartford and to give him added strength and courage to meet whatever temptations might be in the future. Well, better be on our way to the airport. I'll call a cab. Okay. See you downstairs in, say, uh, ten minutes? Right. Maybe we ought to phone New York and be sure the office made our hotel reservations. And maybe see if the girls would like to have dinner with us tonight. Well, if you want to call New York, that's perfectly all right with me. But as for the girls, well, this trip is going to be strictly business. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. about ready to leave. Well, I wanted to say goodbye again and, and tell you I love you. Bye. We'll be back next week with another episode of This is the Life. In the meantime, I invite you to seek further wisdom from God's Word, the Bible, and I invite you to visit one of our congregations in your area. We are the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and you will find our 6,000 congregations listed at www.lcms.org. This program has been brought to you by Main Street Living, which relies on the generosity of viewers to support this programming. They appreciate your prayers and would also appreciate your financial support. You can view additional episodes of This Is The Life on the Main Street Living website. Thanks for watching and join us again next week, same time, same channel, for another episode of This Is The Life.